If you've ever poured your heart into a garden only to end up with stunted, sad-looking plants that refuse to grow, you're not alone. It's one of the most frustrating experiences a gardener can face. At Hydrohaven, we hear this complaint all the time, and the root of the problem almost always comes down to one thing. Poor soil. But the good news is, poor soil isn't a dead end. It's a challenge. And like all great gardening challenges, it has a solution. Today, we're diving into five transformative actions you can take to revive lifeless soil and finally give your plants the healthy, vibrant home they deserve. Start with a soil test, don't guess no. Too many gardeners jump straight into fertilizing or adding compost without understanding what's actually going on underground. This often leads to wasted time, money and effort. A proper soil test is the single most important first step in diagnosing stunted plant growth. It gives you a clear look at your soil's pH, nutrient levels, and sometimes even its organic matter content. You can get a basic soil test kit at your local garden center or send a sample to a lab for more precise results. Once you have the results, you'll know exactly what's missing, whether it's nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, or trace minerals like boron or magnesium. You'll also be able to determine if your soil is too acidic or too alkaline, both of which can block nutrient absorption and stunt plant development. Fixing your soil starts with facts. Don't guess. Test. Feed your soil, not just your plants. Many gardeners treat soil like a passive container for plants, but soil is a living system that needs to be nourished, just like your plants do. If your garden soil is depleted, compacted, or lifeless, adding synthetic fertilizers might give your plants a temporary boost, but they won't solve the underlying issue. Start by feeding your soil with high-quality organic matter. Compost is king here, especially if it's made from diverse materials like vegetable scraps, leaves, grass clippings, and manure. Worm castings are another powerful amendment that bring a potent dose of microbes and nutrients to the soil. If you can, add leaf mold or mushroom compost to boost microbial activity and help retain moisture. When organic matter breaks down, it creates humus, a sponge-like substance that holds onto nutrients and improves soil structure. This turns your dirt into a living, breathing ecosystem that supports robust plant growth. Aerate and break up compaction. If your plants are stunted and seem to be doing absolutely nothing for weeks on end, compacted soil might be the silent culprit. Roots need space to grow, and compacted soil suffocates them by cutting off air and water flow. This is especially common in heavy clay soils or areas where foot traffic is frequent. One of the most effective ways to address this is by physically loosening your soil. You can use a broad fork or garden fork to aerate garden beds without turning over the soil layers too aggressively. This allows air, water, and microbes to reach deeper levels without disrupting the existing soil structure. For container gardens or raised beds, consider mixing in aeration materials like perlite, pumice, or even rice hulls. These additions create pockets of air and help water drain properly, which in turn prevents root rot and supports healthier root systems. Healthy soil breathes. Give it the air it needs. Rebuild the soil food web with biology. Plants don't grow alone, they rely on a complex web of organisms that live in the soil. If your soil is dead, sterile, or heavily treated with chemicals, that ecosystem has likely been disrupted, and without those microbial allies your plants are essentially trying to grow in isolation. Introducing biology back into your soil can be a total game-changer. This means adding compost teas, mycorrhizal fungi, and beneficial bacteria to kickstart microbial activity. Compost tea, made by steeping compost in water and aerating it, introduces a slurry of life into your garden that helps with nutrient cycling and disease resistance. Mycorrhizal fungi form symbiotic relationships with plant roots, extending their reach and increasing their access to water and nutrients. Just a dusting of this fungal inoculant at the time of planting can dramatically improve plant vigor. You can also use commercial soil biology boosters that include strains of Bacillus subtilis and Trichoderma, which promote healthy root development and suppress harmful pathogens. Once the microbial life in your soil starts thriving, you'll begin to see a dramatic difference in your plant's growth and resilience. Your plants need allies. Put the biology back where it belongs. Use smart mulching to retain moisture and regulate temperature. One of the most overlooked aspects of soil health is the role of mulch. Without mulch, your soil is exposed to the elements, baking in the sun, drying out in the wind, and losing nutrients every time it rains. With mulch, you create a protective barrier that helps regulate temperature, conserve moisture, and feed your soil as it breaks down. Organic mulches like shredded leaves, straw, wood chips or even grass clippings are excellent choices. They not only improve water retention but also decompose over time, enriching the soil with organic matter. Just be sure not to pile mulch right up against plant stems, as this can trap moisture and invite rot. 
Mulch also acts as a buffer against soil compaction, keeping the top layer of soil loose and aerated, and by covering bare soil, you suppress weeds that would otherwise compete with your plants for nutrients and water. Smart mulching is like putting a roof on your garden's house. It protects everything underneath and keeps the environment stable and productive. Common mistakes to avoid when reviving poor soil. Knowing what to do is only half the battle. Knowing what not to do can save your plants from even more setbacks. One of the biggest mistakes gardeners make is over-fertilizing, especially with chemical fertilizers. These can burn plant roots and kill beneficial microbes, creating a vicious cycle of dependency and poor soil health. Another frequent error is working wet soil. Digging or tilling when soil is waterlogged causes compaction and ruins structure. Wait until the soil crumbles easily in your hand before you start working with it. Neglecting pH is another big one. If your soil is too acidic or too alkaline, even the best fertilizer won't help because the nutrients will be chemically locked away. Always test your pH and make gentle, informed adjustments using lime or sulfur based on your specific needs. Finally, avoid relying on one amendment as a miracle cure. Super soil blends are powerful because they balance many different ingredients, organic matter, minerals, biology, and structure. Poor soil isn't usually fixed by adding one thing. It's fixed by creating a balanced living system over time. Build better soil, grow better plants. Stunted plants are a clear sign that your soil needs help, but they're also a call to action. Every garden, no matter how depleted, can be revitalized with the right approach. Test your soil, feed it with organic matter, break up compaction, restore biological life, protect it with mulch. These steps may not sound glamorous, but they are the building blocks of lush, vibrant gardens that thrive year after year. If you found this guide helpful, don't forget to subscribe to Hydrohaven and share this video with your fellow plant lovers. Your support helps us continue bringing real science-backed gardening knowledge to gardeners around the world. Let's grow better soil together. Happy growing!